Good morning, this is Big D Cross. Um, today, <clears throat> the Lord put in my heart to do another sermon. We had talked in prior about um, being a soldier, um, the ways that we need to change. And also we talked about the afflictions of being a soldier on each and every one of those areas. Today we're going to talk about the law. How does the law really have a play into this? And how do we have a play into the law? Now first I want to open up with prayer. Dear Yeshua, I ask that everyone receive this, that you would change their lives, that they would become adapted to the spirit, that they would know, Lord, that the fire within them is consuming fire that never burns out, only Lord, when they reach to you for all answers in prayer and glory, let everyone who received this be praised and glorified inside and go and tell others and love our brothers and sisters. We give you praise to be here. We give you honor to be here. We're thankful that you're in our sight, that you give us authorization to have another day. Blessed be your name, Yeshua. In your name I pray, amen. I just I just give glory to Yeshua today because you now he's constantly teaching me something, constantly changing um, direction in my life to help me see higher, never lower but higher. Uh, and today, first we all know you know there's a law, the law is saying a lot of the United States right now has failed because the law is not where it should be. Uh, the Constitution is not upheld right. Um, but the matter of it is, is that with man, it's going to be different than it is with the Lord. Yes, right. There's going to be a big difference in law because the laws work different ways. And let's, let's look at the Lord's law. First of all, back in the Old Testament, they had to go, it was called a tabernacle congregation. And when you went back then, you had to find out, hey, does my sin be forgiven? And if not, I'll have to leave the desert and leave my family forever. And see, Yeshua knew this was too much, that we were born into sin. And he realized that the law is just overwhelming. And sometimes it's too much that he sent his only son uh Yeshua, that whoever, whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He went to the cross for you and me, that we have a renewing of the mind, that the law now uh, is filtrated a different way. It's through repentance. The key of the law is through repentance. Um, and let's look at a few scriptures to determine that. Uh, keep the book of the law. Uh, this is in Joshua 1.8. Um, always in your lips, meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully do everything written on it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The difference between the Lord's law is to lift you up and to move you forward. The law of the world is a statute in which works for the world's proceedings of what they see fit and monitor what they see need to be monitored. Now, the Lord has his way regardless because if you have fruit of the Spirit and you have joy in your life, as we read in Galatians 5, 22, 23, it says, for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things there is no law. So the law he has is stipulated by the truth, the comfort of the Spirit to direct our paths. And the number one thing he said, love your neighbors as yourself. Now that's the key to the law. And the second commandment, love your neighbors as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. That was in Mark uh, 1231. So if you look at the law and stipulate, because right now a lot of people are struggling because um, there's a lot of policy going on. Uh, there's a lot of backbiting in America. Uh, there's a lot of upside down 
things, but we still have to look at the law of the Lord and how it upholds. Now, back in Deuteronomy 30, 16, it said, For I command you today to love the Lord your God. Uh, love, and we just read what love was. Okay, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. And then you will live and increase. Notice with his law, there's an increasement. With our law, there's never an increase. Um, and this is how the Spirit of the Lord works. And your Lord, your God, will bless you in the land you're entering to possess. That's a big difference. And when you look at it in a political fact or you look at it as a spiritual fact, either way, uh, the law of the Lord is stipulated to love and increase you to have better and more things in your life. Um, today, a lot of people have lost the ability to believe. They've lost the ability in our, our Congress. They've lost the ability in our presidential campaign. They lost the ability in, because of COVID. Uh, they lost all their abilities of law. They feel like we are being torn down and ripped apart and and unfairness, and, and there's a lot of hurt and pain just going on daily. Well, that's because we have to focus on the law of Yeshua, and we can't really uh, enter into the world right now. Uh, we have to accept and pray for the Congress and pray for the presidential and pray for those because who is above all them is the Lord Yeshua, and at the right time, They'll be chained according to his will, his grace, and his glory. Uh, Romans 6.15 says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Now you have to understand it was the grace of Yeshua to go on the cross for you and I today that we'd be standing where we are right now. Uh, this is one of the key points that is different than his law stipulates uh, more love, it stipulates more uh, bearing for us than the world's law will. So it's try to help you understand that as a soldier, a soldier lives under law and statutes. He lives his, his, uh, his life according to the law and what he's taught by the government to do and how to carry out his orders is very uh, proficient or his daily life schedule because he's committed to that area. And then when he sees a non-commitment to other soldiers and the backward appearance, the caring about, then this is where we see the the locking, the, the bearings lock in that gear, that engine. It stops because all of a sudden from what he thought was right, now he's seeing wrong and Thinking of the world statutes, that's where things go backwards. But if we read in Psalms 103, David constantly needed some edification in his battles. In uh, 103, 17, 18, it says, But from the everlasting to everlasting, Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness, and with their children's children, and those who keep his covenant, remember to obey his precepts. And so this is a point of it that we have to understand that while we battle as soldiers in affliction as we talk, we also have to understand the law is crucial here for us, but it, it's the divine law that the Lord sets first. You know, he always says to be upheld righteous and pray for those in government above you, but he also says, look to me first. And I think a lot of us are a lot of downgrid, a lot of depressed, uh, because the laws and the, the government and things are just pulling people down. And this is the attribute of how the enemy uh, disguises himself as a perpetual caregiver, but at the same time stabbing you in the back with a dagger. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 6.14 says, Be not yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteous and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? 
So here's a key factor here. If you're, you're, you're living your life of Christ, you're living in the light, and you see nothing but somebody in the darkness, it is not to cut them off and say, okay, I have nothing to do with them. Uh, he's saying, uh, pray for them. He's saying, uh, don't get yoked in, in an agreement with them. He's saying that right now is crucial to be praying as he exposes the darkness to you. You can take hold of that. And this part of your life, you can actually demonstrate true love. And that's how you do it by his law as works out in love. For the fruit of the Spirit is love. And it starts out that way, as we read earlier. So when you look at this in the statutes of how... The law works with the Lord, uh, Yeshua, and how the statutes work with the law and, and our uh, government or our policies and whatnot. They change them as they see fit, but the law of God never changes. It's always going to be the same. It's always going to help you increase. It's always going to give you an outing when there is none. It's always going to bear witness before you. If you keep the law of statute, uh, it can't be said right now for that in our countries, in our world, whatever you want to look at, because we cannot rely on man. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit to bring us the truth and justification of the law of what the Lord has for us daily and how he wants us to go about each day. Uh, Galatians 6, 2 says that carry each other's burdens and in this way, uh, we'll fulfill the law of Christ. That means that we are to constantly pray. We are to constantly intercede. We are to constantly uh, have love for one another, regardless of circumstance. There's a lot of people out there that aren't in agreement with us. There are a lot of people out there that want the easier route. Uh, it's a, a lot easier route when you don't have to go through hardships. It's a lot easier route when you don't have to pay attention uh, to these areas that the Lord's defining in his soldiers right now. But the key is, it's the law of God. It's the law that is going to change the ability for you not to be able to have to go to these burdens that others are going through to help them overcome those areas they cannot see. For many eyes right now are being callous because the enemy is on the line and forefront, doing everything he can to produce uh, what I call a persuasion spirit. And a persuasion spirit is to where it looks like something happened in your life. Let's say you all of a sudden got uh, won a new car or won the lottery, and at the same time you had a million dollars. Well, at your point, it looks like your life is just being blessed to you, uh, wow, a major blessing. I have all this money, pay all my bills. Now I don't have to worry. Um, and But at the same time, it's the enemy's disguise because he's going to release all the demons. We understand money is the root of all evil. That means he can present all the demons in your life to tear and rip and tear you down. When the Lord presents it for you, it is a gift. And a gift is totally different. It is not disguised. It doesn't come in an entity at which the world offers, but it comes in the spiritualness of the soul and spirit where you realize totally in your life that it's not the same today as it was yesterday because you feel that change in your spirit from keeping the law. The Lord has blessed you and helping you to bear things that which you couldn't, now you can I, the Bible says in Psalms 119.10, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. So he knows that we were born into sin, that it's a constant barrier for us to follow his statutes, his laws, and decrees. He must continue to allow us to build in them. So he has room, yes, for failure. That's why he sent. Uh, Yeshua, his son, to the cross because before it was either the commandments or it was over. You went to tabernacle congregation and you had to leave your family and that's the way it would have been. Now, that's using Joshua as an example in 22.5. It said, but be careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant Lord, gave you 
to love your Lord God, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commands, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. And that's kind of what we just talked about. Now, that was back in Joshua, but today it stands strong still. So when you see uh, failing, when you see discouragement, when you see a lot of changes in the world today, uh, the policy or the, the disguising of the enemy has always been in works. Uh, a lot of you are just opening up and seeing more reality of what the Lord's showing you because of his love. He's making it more known to return to him and allow you that chance to be called chosen and not one that will fail. Because in Psalms 1 it says, For the wicked are not so, they're like a chaff in the wind, and they shall not even see judgment. And the Lord has something better planned for us than that. That's why First John 3, 21, 22 says, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. Amen. Now, that's that's the difference today in the law of statute. I needed to give you that because we've got to understand the law is different for us than it is uh, looking at the world right now. It's a policy of a disguise of the enemy trying to really perpetuate and pull people down or... You have to disguise the enemy to give you more than you have to think you have a blessing when it's the altar of what a true blessing is. A blessing is when you learn spiritually of what the Lord is telling us and the truth and you bond with him in the spirit daily to know uh, how righteousness really stands in these hard times. Um, finally, uh, time, time and time again, as we go on and, and, and we learn more and more, we learn that the Lord is truly faithful. And it comes through your battles. It comes through your hardships. It comes through those areas you cannot um, relate until you go to that area of your life of testing. And then afterwards you see, hey, the Lord was faithful. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, a great example of 3.3. 3. Uh, it says, For the Lord is faithful and will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Amen. And that is uh, today and the law of God. That's a part one series of the law we'll be learning. <clears throat> That's what he told me to bring. Um, I am so thankful for each one of you. Uh, I pray every day for everyone. Uh, I continue my spirit to intercede to do what the Lord says do and will continue to do. Let us give him glory. Let us give him praise. For his law is our law, and we live by it to his glory and grace. We give you praise and thanks, Yeshua, for today, for the glory shines upon the people today, that they could be the splendor of you today. I thank you for this time, for those who hear that, let their hearts and souls be changed and see the light that light is upon them. And it's one, two, three, big D cross. Until next time, God bless you. And all, uh, let's all keep the faith. Amen and amen.